Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a rundown mobile theater touring London. Dr. Parnassus, a sage powerful enough to externalize someone's greatest wish into reality, through imagination, oversees the mobile theater. Valentina, his daughter, stout helper Percy, and Barker Anton make up his theater ensemble. The troupe sits near a pub, and Anton begins the show by introducing Parnassus first, followed by their main attraction, Imaginarium, a mirror doorway to dreamland, powered by Parnassus' powerful intellect. Anyone who enters the Imaginarium can see their personal dreams. They can also change their appearance based on personal preference. While the group is performing on stage, four inebriated clubbers exit the club, and one of the drunkards decides to ruin the spectacle. He forces Anton and Percy off the stage and catcalls Valentina. She flees into the Imaginarium to avoid the alcoholic, but he follows her, and is astonished to find her appear behind a mirror in a forest. Regardless, he pursues Valentina, but she retaliates by jabbing his body as he approaches her. Valentina cheerfully exits the Imaginarium after giving the alcoholic what he deserved. The Imaginarium transforms into the drunkard's darkest desire, a location with a limitless supply of liquor. The drunkard arrives in the desert after a strange thing lowers him from the sky upon a giant thumbtack. The test offers two options, to self-fulfillment and enlightenment, or to the joy of ignorance. The voice of Parnassus shouts from the sky, challenging the alcoholic to climb the mountain to find satisfaction, but Parnassus' enemy Nick, the personified devil, arrives at a club to distract and seduce the drunkard. The drinker evidently selects the club, but the structure explodes after he enters the club. As a result, Nick triumphs and Parnassus loses another soul to the devil. Parnassus returns to reality and closes the portal. Cops arrive briefly to interfere in the conflict between the group and the clubbers, who accuse Valentina of kidnapping the drunk. A cop searches for the alcoholic on the small stage, but he cannot locate him. The troupe then goes on to play at a fair, where a child sneaks into the mirror. This time, Anton enters the mirror to collect the child before his parents suspect them of kidnapping. When Anton enters, he is taken aback to find Parnassus' mind externalizing the child's fantasy land into reality, where everything is a massive colorful game. Parnassus then comes as a hot air balloon to chase the boy away, but the kid just shoots him down to silence him. Anton returns to the stage to rouse Parnassus, allowing the child to rejoin his frightened parents. The show concludes, and the troupe retires for the evening. Valentina surreptitiously reads a family magazine backstage, wishing for a normal family, but she knows it's impossible right now. Meanwhile, Percy overhears Nick and Parnassus talking about an old bet involving Valentina. When Nick eventually departs, Percy approaches Parnassus, warning him to tell Valentina the truth before it's too late. The troupe soon departs from the festival and travels to a remote location. On the way, Anton and Valentina discuss fleeing together on the roof, but Valentina exposes her bell anklet, indicating that she is still a minor. She is optimistic because she will turn 16 in three days. She pays a visit to her inebriated father in his bedroom, where he is busily reading cards. When Parnassus sees her, he quickly stops reading his cards, and seizes the opportunity to tell her about his background. It turns out that many years ago, Parnassus was a virgin monk living in a sanctuary, erected on a snowy mountain with other monks. Their main purpose in life was to keep recounting the eternal story, so that the world does not vanish into oblivion. However, Nick, the personification of the devil thought their objective was ridiculous. As a result, he went to the sanctuary to disprove the monks' ridiculous ideas. Except for Parnassus, Nick suctioned all of the monks' lips first, to prove that the world didn't depend on their stories. Just then, a bird messenger from another world emerged and spit on Nick as an insult. Parnassus asserted confidently that the world continued to exist, because there were more humans in the cosmos or dimension who never ceased telling stories. After that, Nick made a wager, the first person to collect 12 disciples would win. For the first time, Parnassus wagered against the devil. Nick's argument revolved around the necessity of danger terror and the happiness of ignorance in life, but Parnassus emphasized the ability of imagination to transform lives and convert his pupils. Parnassus eventually won the difficult battle, and got immortality as a reward. However, Nick's win over Parnassus was a ruse. Nick let Parnassus triumph because he understood that times changed, and that no one would listen to his stories any longer. Unfortunately, his story ends abruptly when the mobile theater comes to a halt on the bridge. Valentina wants him to keep going, but he instructs her to investigate what's going on. She then departs, leaving him to flip the remaining card, revealing an image of a hanged man. Valentina, meanwhile, joins Anton and Percy on the top. When the lightning struck earlier, Anton claims he saw a shadow on the lake. After three flashes of lightning, 
they believe that the shadow is a person hanging beneath the bridge. The trio immediately collaborates to save the individual who is dangling. Anton descends the bridge and encounters a man with a red stamp mark on his forehead. Rain begins to fall as Anton returns to the surface with the stranger. On the roof, Parnassus appears and tells them to leave the stranger alone. Valentina, on the other hand, wants to save the stranger, so Anton thumps on the stranger's chest to resuscitate him. The stranger coughs up and spits out a pipe, but then collapses from fright. The stranger awakens the next day, perplexed as to where he is or what is going on. Percy then approaches him and asks for his name, following which he claims to have forgotten everything due to a concussion. Parnassus abruptly exits the mobile theater, and Anton informs him about the slab with Russian writings they discovered from the stranger the night before. Parnassus then pulls out the card and compares it to the stranger, presuming he was sent by Nick to place a new bed. Parnassus joyously re-enters the mobile, as there is new hope for Valentina's rescue from Nick. The troupe prepares outside a convenience store at night, and Valentina assigns the stranger to sell tickets. The stranger miraculously leads a gathering of onlookers to the stage, and then encourages the troupe to begin the act. However, a drunk Parnassus collapses in front of them, prompting the audience to demand refunds. However, the stranger makes up a terrible narrative about Valentina being unwell, and needing money to pay for her medication. The audience believes him, and even buys more seats after Valentina offers them a discount. She celebrates the money they got when the show concludes. However, Anton is envious of Valentina's interest in the stranger. Meanwhile, Nick pays a visit to Parnassus to make it clear that the stranger is not his pawn, and that he has no trust in him. Furthermore, he discloses that the stranger's name is Tony, a philanthropist who runs a charity. Following that, he makes a new wager, whoever wins five souls before Valentina's 16th birthday wins her for life. As a result, they have only two days to accomplish the assignment. Tony's persuasive talents enable the ensemble to purchase extra food the following day. Valentina then hands Tony a chicken to pluck its feathers. While cleaning the chicken, Tony discovers a newspaper with his photograph on the front page, and the title, Missing Disgraced Head of Children's Charity. Meanwhile, Parnassus convinces himself that Tony was brought to them for a reason, and so he approaches him, who hastily throws the newspaper near the bonfire, and puts on a strange helmet. Parnassus explains to him that the helmet allows him to read the minds of people. Then he behaves as though he's learnt anything new, when all he's done is convey to everyone what he learned from Nick last night. Tony uses Parnassus' power to appear to remember his real name, Tony, so that they won't interrogate him about his true identity. Anton, who is fumbling with his pipe near the mobile theater, subsequently recognizes Tony's pipe. Tony gets the pipe, which makes Anton suspicious of him, because he recalls a simple pipe but not his memories. Anton overhears Parnassus and Percy's plan to exploit Tony to earn the five souls late at night. Throughout the show, their plan forces Anton to compete with Tony, in order to achieve Parnassus' approval. When Tony finds a customer, Anton kidnaps her and forces her into the Imaginarium. Anton's actions cause the concert to implode, as club bouncers begin to intercede between their troupe and the customer's protesting friend. As they flee the club, Percy is inspired to discharge fireworks straight from a cannon. When the troupe lands at a secluded place, Valentina and Percy are enraged at Anton's recklessness which has lost them their jobs and their houses. Anton distances himself to atone for his prior error. Tony, on the other hand, joins him in his solitude, to inquire about Parnassus and the mirror. Anton explains that Parnassus' mind provides the mirror power, resulting in astounding imagination. Tony is skeptical of Anton's argument, but Anton convinces him that Parnassus merely wants to encourage the globe. Meanwhile, Parnassus tells Valentina about her birth in his bedroom. He reclaimed his mortality in order to date the lovely woman he adored. Unfortunately, their love story came with a price that was too agonizing to bear. His story however ends on a cliffhanger as he falls asleep. The next day, Tony offers that they renovate the stage with their whole savings, to give the theater a fresh look. Valentina prevents Anton from leaving the theater, because she needs him. That night, the group gets a total makeover, and the mobile theater gets a new look. Tony takes over as the new Barker, and they are preparing to perform at a shopping center. He seduces wealthy women by offering them a once-in-a-lifetime chance to be purified by Parnassus' amazing imagination. Audiences rush to the stage to experience this. However, they can only accommodate one at a time. Just then, a snobbish senior yells at them and gestures at Percy, who she guesses is a black child forced to work. Tony summons the posh elder to the stage, and transports her to the Imaginarium. He follows her inside and notices that her mind has created a pastel fashion realm. He also gets a fresh appearance based on her own hobbies. 
They ultimately dance, but he can't stop picturing Valentina floating gracefully in the air. The affluent elder must then find a route between Nick's motel and Parnassus' gondola. The affluent chooses the motel at first, but Tony persuades her to take the gondola instead. Fortunately, she listens to him and ultimately chooses Parnassus' route, making her Parnassus' first sole win. Tony reappears on stage with his true face. The wealthy elder then emerges, and offers all of her valuable possessions to the contribution box, to express gratitude for the purification. Three additional women enter the mirror shortly after, and each reappears with apparent satisfaction. Nick watches from afar as Parnassus wins four souls, but he still has none. Parnassus still needs one more soul, but their recent wins have hampered their plans. Just then, four Russian thugs come to the mall looking for Tony, because he owes them money. Since he was unable to repay, the syndicate decided to hang him beneath the bridge. However, they most likely discovered him missing beneath the bridge and are currently looking for him. He pushes away the very guy Parnassus needs to defeat, in order to escape the Russian goons. The goons pursue him after spotting him, ascending a ladder going to the clouds. Tony falls from the ladder, allowing the thugs to seize him. Due to his different features, they initially feel they have the incorrect person, but when they wipe off his brow, the red mark they stamped on him appears. Tony swallows the pipe as the thugs prepare to hang him, allowing him to breathe while dangling in the air. Anton comes just in time to save Tony, but the thugs knock him down as well. They're going to hang Tony, but it's time to pick between Parnassus and Nick's road, ignoring Tony's dire predicament. Unfortunately, the four thugs follow Nick, putting him on level with Parnassus. Following that, the group concludes the performance, and travels to a peaceful location to rest for the time being. However, with only an hour till the bet expires, Parnassus seizes the opportunity to expose the truth to Valentina. Parnassus' love story with the woman came with a catch, when his offspring reached the age of 16, they will become Nick's property. Valentina gets enraged at him for treating her like a gaming token, and walks off. Unfortunately, Parnassus drives Percy away in frustration since everything is in disarray. Percy grants his desire and departs for good. Meanwhile, Tony wants to return to the mirror to complete his dream, so he assists Parnassus in relaxing, so that he may focus his strength to unlock the Imaginarium. Tony drags Valentina with him as the portal opens, but Anton stops them after uncovering Tony's true identity. He stole organs from the young and sold them to wealthy countries. Anton indicates that Tony is a wicked man, but Tony denies everything, and walks into the mirror with Valentina. He is wearing the face she admires in the family magazine this time. She has an amorous experience with him during their gondola ride. Their moment is cut short when an orphan emerges on the shore. Valentina's dream transitions to Tony's dream, indicating that he's a prominent philanthropist connected with powerful leaders. While he is enjoying his dream, Anton appears as a child to convince a befuddled Valentina that Tony is a fraud. Tony on the other hand catches Anton, and beats him up in front of the crowd. Soon, his illusion is shattered, and the individuals morph into mobs intent on murdering him. Valentina and Anton flee the Imaginarium, but Anton trips and falls, barely hanging on. She attempts to help him, but he grows and becomes too heavy. He seizes the opportunity to profess his feelings for her, before letting go and falling into oblivion. Tony snatches her hair and slaps her for spoiling his dream. However, he quickly abandons her in order to flee the pursuing crowd. Unfortunately, she still resents her father's gambling addiction, so she selects Nick's path in order to exact revenge on Parnassus. As a result, Parnassus and Valentina both lose the bet. However, Nick offers Parnassus another wager, killing Tony in exchange for the soul of his daughter. Parnassus accepts the wager, and waits for Tony to reach the mountaintop which represents the road to self-fulfillment. Tony ultimately makes it to the hilltop, and sees Parnassus suspended in the air. He saves Parnassus, so that he can replace him when the mob approaches to kill. However, since Parnassus knows Tony uses the pipe to cheat, he plays a little game with him. He pauses time, and allows Tony to choose between two similar pipes, one of which is a forgery. While Tony mulls over his options, Parnassus hopes Tony makes the incorrect choice. When he eventually decides on a pipe, Parnassus resumes the flow of time. He then eats the pipe, and surrenders to the mob. Just before the mob kills him, Parnassus shows the real pipe, indicating that Tony chose the fake one. He perishes, and Parnassus wins the wager. Nick then releases Valentina's spirit, but conceals her whereabouts, leaving Parnassus heartbroken and alone in the Imaginarium, searching for his daughter. Parnassus returns to London as a vagrant. Valentina happens to walk by and drops a coin, and continues on her way to a restaurant. She meets Anton and a child, and Parnassus follows her. 
she is now living her ideal dream with Anton. Percy creeps up behind him, and urges him to leave, because they're doing fine without him. He accepts the reality and joins Percy in their new chapter, staging a toy theater in front of the children. While they are working, Nick returns to bed, but Percy orders him to return to work. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.